Hello and welcome to Dialogue. Japan has approved a plan to dump more than a million tons of wastewater from the destroyed Fukushima nuclear plant into the ocean. The decision has caused global controversy, and some local residents and international environmental protection organizations are also voicing their protest. So the question is: Does Japan have to dump the radioactive wa water into the sea? And what impact would have? Is there a better solution to talk about those issues and more? I'm joined here in the studio by Ann R. Tangen, our independent current affairs commentator, while Skype by Wu Changhua, executive director of the Professional Association for Chinese Environment, and by satellite by Terence Terashima, our correspondent in Japan, and Shane Han, our correspondent in South Korea. That's our topic. I'm Zhou Yue. Uh, let me start with you, Terence. Uh, the Prime Minister, uh, Yoshihida Tsuga, uh, told a meeting of ministers that the water from the Fukushima plant into the Pacific was the most realistic option and unavoidable in order to achieve Fukushima's recovery. So uh, how harmful is the discharged wastewater into the sea likely to be? Does the Japanese government has considered the full consequences? Well, uh, to you. Japanese government and uh, Tokyo Electric Company have been debated uh, on this for a decade and what to do with accumulated water uh, from the crippled uh, Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant. The water uh, is used to cool the damaged reactors uh, and, the, uh, and the exposed rods and has been an issue uh, that it is accumulating over the years and it will continue to accumulate. They knew that the past administrations, the Abe administrations, uh, knew that, but they simply ran out of time and, and, and solution. And it's over 1.3 trillion uh, tons uh, of uh, uh, treated water. It, it is treated by uh, what is called the Advanced Liquid Processing System, so-called the ALPS. But uh, it, it's, it's capable to remove 62 radioactive materials. But uh, tritium is something that is hard to uh, to remove. And the tanks, uh, 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 the number of tanks and facilities is expected to be full by. Uh, at, at 2022. So uh, simply it fell on Suga administration to make the uh, final uh, decision. And, and unless there is other uh, uh, solutions uh, like the new technology or, or further expanding uh, the, uh, the, the tanks beyond the facilities of uh, of the current uh, Fukushima number one in nuclear power plant, Suga said uh, this decision of releasing the waters two years from now is is the most sound solution. In this. And 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 uh, Suga said that it is in uh, J Japan is in constant contact with the IEA and uh, and uh, uh, derive on this solution as, as the best solution at the current stage. And so, that decision comes about three months uh, before the postponed Olympics in Tokyo. And some of the events will be held as close as 60 kilometers away from the plant. So PR-wise, that doesn't sound very smart. Well, um, if you remember in 2013, uh, then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said Fukushima is under control. Now, w w is this uh, part of that under control that he, he mentioned? Um, the, according to uh, Japan's uh, uh, Agency for New, uh, Natural Resources uh, uh, and Energy Agency, uh, there is uh, some capacity to build a tank so you can prolong, uh, 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 have a capacity to prolong the, uh, uh, the process to find uh, new uh, solutions. But uh, uh, TEPCO and, and the agency said the, the, the facility is absolutely uh, full up for the moment, and uh, it has no um, uh, more space to build uh, uh, more tanks uh, on the south side and north side. They need to build some more facilities in order to store the rods uh, when they take the rods out from the uh, from the damaged reactors. And also, there is a, um, a questions that uh, whether it can uh, build more tanks outside the facility, buy up more lands, rent more. Uh, more lands uh, from the residents, but uh, uh, that has been um, uh, uh, it, it, it a deadlock between the um, 
um, between the residents and uh, also uh, uh, with the government as it is already used for mm. storing uh, contaminated uh, uh, debris as well. So uh, I'm, I'm, uh, as, as far as uh, Suga is concerned, uh, they have run out of option. So they, they think this is the best option. They've exhausted all the other possibilities, including expanding the tank storage area, storing it underground other ways. They think this is still the best solution. That's what the Suga government have, uh, uh, have said, uh, that uh, this is the cur uh, currently that is the only solution that they see. Mm. And uh, Ms. Wu, uh, currently uh, Fukushima's 1.27 million tons of nuclear wastewater uh, contains about 3.4 grams of tritium. Uh, what is uh, this element and what are the other radioactive elements that might be there but um, posing a danger to the environment? Sure, I think uh, tritium has been part of the uh, attention uh, of the global community. Uh, because it's a byproduct, byproduct of a nuclear <laughs> reactor. Uh, it's, a radioactive, it's a radioactive isotope that potentially could uh, really threaten um, lives, you know, both, uh, uh, you know, biological, you know, lives in nature and also uh, for human beings either. So internationally, there are standards. Uh, the countries have standards as well. But Japan say they have the already water. met the standard after treating the water, yeah. the tritium level is That's acceptable. That's what they're saying. You, That's what they're you don't, saying now. You don't accept but that. If you look at, if you, if you, if you de look deeper into the standards uh, among different countries, it varies tremendously. So uh, probably Japanese Japanese standard is among the highest uh, in terms of the concentration of tritium in the drinking water. It's a six times above, uh, you know, uh, of the WHO standard. It's much much higher than that in Finland, for instance, in the United States. There, so. The existence of tritium in the uh, water, even though it's treated, actually, uh, continues to pose a potential threat to human health. That's a big concern at this moment. But the wastewater itself doesn't just have tritium. It also has an 62 other radionuclides. Mm -hmm. uh, they are iodine and uh, uh, plutonium, uh, you know, among others, uh, that are potentially also uh, posing threats to human health and also threaten the health of the ecosystem. Uh, there as well. So the, the issues is complicated in a way uh, that the global community needs to be concerned because 10 years ago when the disaster happened, a tremendous amount of nuclear waste water actually already actually dumped into the Pacific Ocean and causing tremendous hazard actually to not only the marine life but also potentially threatening mm. uh, the human lives actually in the food chain of the seafood there. Today we're talking about Japanese decisions and uh, as we're talking about here, Prime Minister Suga is using two words. One of the most realistic. Most realistic, actually, probably at this moment, politically for Japanese government, unavoid unavoidable. It what is are the options do you have on your mind if the Japanese have choices? There are two, at least two immediate options on the table, not to look into the long term. One, uh, to uh, build up a more capacity, storage capacity, to keep the wastewater as long as possible, because the decaying time of the, this, those, you know, radio, uh, radio. But they say they run out of space to do that. Time. Yeah, they need to build more, right? I, I know it's controversial, it's difficult actually within the Japanese, uh, Japan, but somehow it's an issue that the Japan has to figure out to deal with. The other thing, actually, from technology perspective. Uh, there is uh, technology already available. It's not in the future. And I think you just overheard you and I actually talking about this particular EON exchange technology. Uh, in the beginning of the accident, there's a company, American company, uh, based in Pennsylvania called mm. uh, Pure Light. Pure Light was invited to Japan and to be part of the solution. So a they new ran technology, this pilot you mean? Using this te it's relatively new. It's, it's no longer that new. So back in 2011, was already there. So the technology applied during the pilot proven that using that particular technology, you will be able to treat the water to mm. the level not detect 
meaning you cannot detect detect any you know the the, the, the nuclear uh, or radionuclides we're talking about it here then you can discharge that probably into you know the the ocean there but somehow one i think a cost is an issue mm -hmm. secondly i think somehow this national protectionism japanese you know government wants to use their own uh, company rather they're using American companies there. So I think peeling off all the controversial, the noises there, the reality is there are options there. One, expand you know, the storage capacity to keep the wastewater as long as possible because you know, the radio nuclides will decay right over uh -huh. the years, over the decades there. Secondly, deploy technologies already available today, no matter what the cost will be, but somehow it's a responsibility for Japanese government to do so. So, so Terence, uh, is the Japanese government considering about cost effective? Do they worry too much about expenses rather than the environmental cost? Well, uh, those questions have been asked uh, by, uh, by the press, but uh, there wasn't a, a clear answer uh, um, uh, from uh, Prime Minister Suga or the, uh, uh, the Ministry of Industry. Uh, uh, officials, uh, uh, they, they said that uh, the answer that uh, we got was that they have considered uh, every option at, at the moment that it, uh, this is the most uh, uh, sound uh, option that they have so far. So they, they, they did not give us a clear uh -huh. um, uh, answers about what elements they, uh, they considered in deriving to this solution. So. NR, uh, the controversial nuclear wastewater discharge plan caused a huge uproar here in Asia. Uh, but actually, the IAEA has been consulted, and they agree that it is agreeable that those water can be discharged <coughs> into the Pacific uh, as the, an option, uh, probably uh, the feasible option. What, what, what do you say to that? Well, the I, there's a trust issue. I mean, obviously, the uh, Chinese government and the uh, Japanese power company, uh, there were some emissions uh, and there's some problems. Uh, the issue we have here is that it needs, something needs to happen. Uh, some of these tanks are not in the best condition. Obviously, the locals do not want an expansion. Remember, this all happened because of an earthquake, and it could happen again. There, there was a tsunami, and that overwhelmed things. So you could have another disaster, and you don't want this water just kind of hanging around. It mm. does have a long half-life. It needs to be treated. Maybe in the future, it can be even treated more. Remember, they're not about to do it tomorrow. This is two years from now, mm. and they're going to have this advanced uh, liquid processing system in place. Hopefully, technology can bring a better solution. I'm also familiar with what my colleague uh, was talking about, and it seems that that would be uh, perhaps uh, an alternative and maybe something that can use additively later. Mm. And Ms. Wu, uh, have other countries discharged radioactive water of this magnitude into sea before? Uh, two ways of looking at it. One, if you look at uh, the common practice, which is a sort of accepted by so-called international standards there, if you look at the nuclear power plants, they're mostly built along the coast or along the river, right? Because the w amount of water mm. nuclear power plants operations needs, basically, to cooling, stuff like that. So discharging sort of treated the water from nuclear facilities into oceans or river bodies has been regarded as a common practice. Yeah. But somehow, in terms of the amount of the, the quantity and also this, because of this disaster explosion, so at this scale, no, uh, probably uh, not before from nuclear facilities there. There's one thing I think I do need to bring up, uh, particularly looking at North Pacific regions there. Uh, over the decades, in, you know, mid before or you know, last century, U.S. Russia, uh, former USSR, uh, had been pretty much testing bombing, right, and uh, explosions uh, in the Pacific region. So, uh, you know, uh, of course, today we're not really pursuing or chasing the, the data evidence at this moment. But the history tells us things like this, you know, so in terms of uh, radioactive uh, waste damaging marine life in particular in the Pacific region, it's not a new thing. It's already been happening. It's already been constraining or stress mm. the, the marine environment already. Uh, so probably that's another context actually to look at this today's event, meaning we're already dealing with a very stressed 
ecosystem, marine environment. Now with this level or this amount of quantity of radioact treated radioactive wastewater into the Pacific Ocean, that's going to add a further layer, further layer of stress to the marine life and potentially threaten human health. Mm. And I think the local Japanese have also voiced their concerns. Uh, Terence, uh, on the 13th civic groups in Fukushima, they gathered in front of the go local government. About 70 demonstrations were held up uh, in Japan saying do not discharge into the sea. Uh, what have the Japanese government responding to those uh, outcries? Well, um, this has been actually this has been an ongoing issue. Uh, 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 we had uh, we had tremors, and we also have typhoons, a uh, major typhoons that hit the area, and there were uh, uh, some uh, spillovers in, into the ocean from the uh, from uh, some of the tanks, and that has been an issue. And for the residents, uh, particularly in, in Fukushima, farmers and fishermen, uh, it, it's a great problem for them because it, uh, for the last decade, they have suffered bad publicity, bad image, all the, all the farms uh, and, and fish products from Fukushima has been thoroughly uh, tested and checked for radiations. Consumers were reluctant to buy the products. Mm. Uh, uh, at the beginning, so the products uh, could not sell and they were undervalued uh, in the market. And it yeah. took them 10 years to restore the, 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 uh, their market presence. And in fact, I was in Fukushima uh, on, on March the 11th on the, on, on the 10th year anniversary, and I've talked to some of the fishermen. And they said, well, it, it's a start. It's been 10 years. It's a start. We're going to, we're going to come back. We're, go, we, we're going to expand our, our, our businesses, and hopefully the prices uh, will come up. And this decision came right after it. So it has been a, a shock and a blow. And TEPCO and, uh, and, and government said, well, if there, there is uh, some um, uh, uh, consequences that uh, 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 comes uh, from this decision, from discharging mm. uh, uh, the, the, the water, they, they said they will compensate. But for the fishermen, uh, well, it's not about compensation. It's about compensation, but it's not only about the compensation, but about the marine life oh. in Fukushima that could be damaged for decades. Uh, so. uh, Ms. Wu, I want you to weigh in on, on the effect on the marine life. Uh, if the church tertiary level or the other uh, radionuclides level uh, are below uh, the standard uh, levels, w what is the biggest impact biomagnification can have on a marine life? Uh, the short answer is, I don't know. I, I think that remains to be unknown uh, for decades to come, uh, particularly by the scientific community, because at this moment, even though one, on one side we have international standards, right, we have the international conventions, and particularly regulating the low dose dosage, actually low level uh, of radioactive materials, actually, uh, in, in, in marine life in particular, but from scientific community, uh, we, we still don't know. There are tremendous uncertainties at this moment in terms of the impasse. Uh, so if, if you follow the principle of a science, uh, there's one particular thing called the precautionary principles. When you are not sure, you don't know, you don't want to take the risk, right? But somehow the, today, the practice is but, but that globally. Is that unknown, uh, unknown bad or unknown catastrophic? Unknown bad. No, we don't know yet the level that the, the, today the existing scientific body, the knowledge actually wouldn't be able to have to draw very clear conclusions. Uh, but in the meantime, we all know when countries or international communities actually make decisions about the standards or whatever the levels or settled stuff like that, that has to be science based. But today, tremendous science, scientific uncertainty wouldn't be able to support mm. that. That's why we need to adopt the precautionary principles, right? Particular put that in the context, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we're already uh, having a very stressed marine ecosystem mm. already. You know, not only okay. nuclear waste, all kinds of waste. You know, human beings literally have been dumping all different kinds of waste into the oceans, and marines over centuries there already, right? And meaning uh, the marine environment already tremendously damaged beyond any carrying capacity of the oceans today. And uh, so if we put the, the situation, again, the case in that context there, we know for okay. sure this should not be allowed to happen. Uh, 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 you want to weigh in on there? Uh, yeah, I, well, I, it's I, all about doses no, uh, I, and the amount of water. Yeah. A uh, lot of things that we don't know for sure. 
Well, we, we do know some things for sure. I mean, there are heavier isotopes which uh, are much more dangerous, and those are the ones that are being released. The lighter, the lightest isotope is the one that's going to remain. Mm. And that does not have the same kind of heavy effect that it does. The, the, the waves are very much lighter. The concern is that it's somehow concentrated in plankton and then passed into the food chain. Uh, but there has not been any uh, evidence uh, of that. And quite frankly, seawater does already contain these uh, radioactive elements in very small quantities. Mm. Uh, so if it was going to be a problem, uh, it probably would have manifested by mm. now. Now, you can say, uh, oh, we need to have an overabundance of caution. Yeah. And I would definitely agree with my colleague that uh, you know we're getting towards that tipping point where we have dumped, done so many terrible things uh, ecologically uh, that this is just another straw mm -hmm. that could potentially break the back of the ecology. And there's also geopolitical ramifications. Shane, I know the ROK government has responded saying the Japanese government's decision is absolutely unacceptable and poses a risk to the safety of neighboring countries and the marine environment. So w will this uh, intensify the already strained relations with Japan? Well, it's, it's hard to say that it could be any more strained uh, from the current position, but uh, someone mentioned earlier the, 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 the mistrust in the Japanese government, and that goes down back centuries, of course, uh, the, the relationship between South Korea and Japan. But uh, today we, we saw President Moon summon the ambassador from Japan uh, to, to lodge a formal complaint. Okay. And the big gripe here is that uh, the transparency uh, wasn't, we didn't see the transparency in uh, the Japanese government's actions, especially geographically seeing South Korea as the closest country in terms mm. of the seas. And, and it, to ma matter of fact, South Korea has already taken measures ever since the 2011 disaster. Um, just 2% of all imported seafood from Japan uh, or in, in South Korea comes from Japan, and there's uh, drastic testing on products that come in. So far, uh, all marine life has come back safe at this point, but that's just not a risk that the South Korean government is willing to take at this point. And will the South Korean fishermen and the marine economy also suffer because of this? Well, it's hard to say uh, because right now, like I said, not a lot of seafood is imported from Japan at this point. Ever since that disaster 10 years ago, uh, marine life coming into South Korea has been banned from eight prefectures near the Fukushima region there. Uh, all, any marine life that comes in from Japan is tested at customs for radiation, as well as at auction. Department stores and large-scale supermarkets don't carry Japanese uh, seafood. You could see them in seafood markets. So already, uh, for the past 10 years now, you could say that South Korea ha has really tried to protect its citizens from uh, any of this, uh, these unknowns. Uh, but of course, this, uh, this latest move by Japan is not going to help uh, in, the, in uh, rebuilding any of that trust. And we've seen uh, demonstrations in front of the Japanese embassy the past couple of days by civic groups as well as uh, members of the fisheries industries as well. Uh, so um, Shane mentioned transparency. Well, China has also similar concerns. The Chinese spokes person from the foreign ministry said that Japan's approach is extremely irresponsible. So do you think China has and South Korea have reasons to doubt the reliability and transparency of the Japanese government? Well, if it was truly transparent, uh, they should Absolutely. have been invited in to uh, talk about this and to see the report and be involved in it. Uh, they didn't. Uh, the U.S. has said that it, they think it's a transparent uh, thing, so uh, this could be geopolitical. But I think uh, a large part of this, at least for China, is this hypocrisy factor. Can mm. you imagine if the shoe was on the other foot? and it was a Chinese nuclear plant uh, releasing waters into things. I, mean, I think there would be a quite different reaction, mm. uh, not so much locally, but uh, from the United States uh, especially. Oh. So there is that feeling that uh, things are, are different depending on which side of the <laughs> geopolitical let's, line Let's you're look on. at the different responses. The U.S. actually extended support to Japan. Uh, State Department spokesman Ned Price said that Tokyo appears to have adopted an approach in accordance with globally accepted nuclear safety standards. And Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said in a tweet, we thank Japan for its transparent efforts in this decision. So Shane, uh, obviously different people have different takes on what transparency stands for. 
Absolutely, and that's why President Moon today uh, asked officials to explore the possibility uh, because obviously South Korea is not going to be able to uh, to combat this uh, on its own. So President Moon is looking uh, to, to possibly take this to the International Maritime Court, the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, for a possible injunction. And it's going to take a concerted effort by neighboring countries to to address this issue. And uh, you know, you mentioned the transparency here. It's it's not just fisheries. You know, it, it's something that could affect the shipping industry as well. Uh, South Korea is closely monitoring any ships. That that come from uh, that area in the Fukushima region, uh, ballast water, uh, you know, water that is used in these big container ships to balance out um, the, the ships as they, Do they, found as they uh, navigate through the seas. In the they ballast haven't. Water? Uh, okay. and, and, you know, that could be from the increased monitoring. Uh, I mentioned more than 16,000 tests have been conducted over the past decade, and no marine life ha has seen any uh, increased amount of radiation, thankfully. So far. And Ms. Wu, uh, the American uh, stance is, is questionable because the FDA report earlier on March the 4th listed the prohibition of series of Japanese foods entering the United States because of nuclear contamination. It seems the Americans also are worried about uh, the contamination from the nuclear power plants leak at water. Why uh, Tony Blinken said that Japan is totally transparent? It's an obvious geopolitical game the U.S. is playing now, and it's also double standard there. Uh, actually, if you look at the science monitoring data, and uh, 10 years ago when uh, the disaster happened, and uh, so if you look at the monitoring stations uh, in uh, Alaska, uh, Washington State, Oregon, and California, they all find, found actually uh, the increased uh, uh, radioactivity among marine life already. Uh, so it's been there, right? And of course, over the last decade, uh, you know, along with the decaying uh, the process, diluting process there, things are getting a little bit better. Uh, so, but the concerns uh, among the uh, American consumers remain, right? Mm. And this is a sort of even psychological impact there. Uh, in the meantime, actually, with more knowledge and information coming out by different scientific bodies, particularly around the marine health, ecosystem health, and the safety issues there, uh, so I think the public has more awareness uh, of the challenges there and becomes more resistant to such a sort of a products, a seafood products with potential sort of threat to their health. It's very normal. So back to the point early on I mentioned, I think U.S. at this moment uh -huh. shouldn't have played such a kind of role, like a double standard and put everything actually into the geopolitical landscape is really unfortunate. So, so Terence, considering the strong uh, pushbacks from neighbors and, and the rest of the world, is it possible for Japan's government to think again? Well, um, it, uh, there, there's been a lot of actions uh, uh, taken, and, and a lot of organizations, international communities, uh, said they, they're going to take uh, actions on this. But it's going to be in, in two years. So experts uh, in Japan uh, say that there's going to be two years uh, of uh, uh, of, uh, of time that they can uh, uh, debate scientifically and in, uh, on, on legal grounds uh, as well. So, uh, and also this possibility of the new technology uh, that comes up. But also, um, Suga's uh, um, term ends in September, mm -hmm. and there's a possibility of new ad a new administration. Um, if it's the same Liberal Democratic Party uh, administration, it could uh, continue w uh, with the, uh, this decision. But uh, there's also a possibility that uh, a younger uh, a, a prime minister candidate would come out and uh, within that uh, the new administration could consider uh, a new uh, uh, possibility. So there's, there's something that uh, 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 I'm sure the international community, but also the Japanese uh, residents, especially in Fukushima, uh, are watching for and trying to appeal to uh, to the younger uh, politicians uh, on, on on this particular decisions and rethink about the uh, possibility of releasing the water. So All right. Thank you, Terence. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Ms. Wu. And thank you, NR. And you've been watching Dialogue here on CGTN. I'm Zhou Beijing. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.